Welcome to Careless Coder. Today a little bit more zig as a reaction to this guy. One day, I was asked to make some changes to a text file containing temperature values. Some of the temperature values were stated in Celsius, while others were stated in Fahrenheit, and they needed me to convert all of them into Celsius. Writing a dedicated program to solve this problem wasn't an option, because that would take forever, but that's when I discovered the power of the awk command. <laughs> Will it take forever? I highly doubt it. So I took up the Contlet and I actually wrote this program for him in Zig. Now of course it's a whole lot larger than Awk, but it's a great practice to use these little things to get that Fingerspitzengefühl, as the Germans call it. And I was done in about 20 minutes when I did it quick and dirty, just printed to the screen without tests. Then I spend another 30, a little bit more, maybe 40 minutes. So an hour in total to write tests and actually have a proper program that also returns that value and just not only is printed to the screen. So let's jump in and write this little conversion tool in Zik. So let's jump straight in. Now I'm not going to write out these tests. This is the code, link in the description. I also made a a Rust version to see how much smaller the code is and it's Yeah, it's it's a bit smaller, but not that much. It's not significantly smaller If anything uh, It's about the same size. So we're just going to copy this in we know this by now Standard library that we're going to use we're going to read from the standard input just like the guy in the video with arc did which is a great solution that he did, by the way. And uh, standard out, because we're going to print to the standard out, not the debug, because I want to pipe it to other programs and have the standard error, the standard debug, to actually print standard errors. Uh, well, this is uh, a maximum size that we're going to use. Um, let's do something like this. And the allocator, because we're going to dynamically allocate everything. So first we start to convert to Celsius. It's ironic that I'm now typing this because my uh, code assistant Cody that I use on uh, my other laptop actually filled this out immediately for me. <laughs> so that is that's kind of fun that that stuff actually works. But by now I remember it by heart. Times 5.0 divided by 9.0 and we need nicer spaces and yes there are still countries that use Fahrenheit I mean in, uh, idiotic countries still use the imperial system and those are Myanmar and the United States of America I mean yeah come on oh and then again you have Great Britain which is sort of like a schizophrenic metric system over there. They still use miles per hour and miles and stone, but the rest is metric. I mean, come on, make up your mind. But then again, England is in the middle of the sensible world, which is uh, old Europe and Asia and America, you know? And Asia without the exception of Myanmar, my God. Okay, uh, let's convert this record. The record is L and a record is basically a line here because we're going to split it on uh, the new line in our uh, main. And so we get back a constant U8, but we will return a U8. Now we need to split this, uh, of course, on the space. So how do we do that? Well, we get back an iterator. If we do standard.mem.split any, and we're splitting a U8, and we're splitting on L, and we're splitting for a space. Boom. So now we have that iterator. So we can check if there is actually a value by calling the next. And if there is, then we capture that temperature. 
and otherwise we return an empty or we could actually return l well we return empty in that case it's a it's a weird case all right so if um yeah the easiest way to check if we're not dealing with a fahrenheit because then we just need to print this to the screen so if not standard dot mem dot equal and equal is basically the string compare in a zig standard library so we compare uh, the type u8 and we're going to peek to the next location because currently the iterator is here we consume this but if we want to actually consume this we need to uh, do another it uh, dot next and capture that value now we're just going to pick it but of course if we have shitty output and i worked long enough on identity management that um, basically the sources that deliver the identities all those stupid hr systems are basically monte carlo test sets because every crap is in there so this could be empty so or else we will set it to empty and we compare this to not being f so if uh, the next value is not f or not empty that's also not f of course then we're just going to uh, return a new string that we're going to make std format dot alloc print yes please we use our allocator and i wish my IntelliSense would be a bit more intelligent that if I tap that it removes the rest as well, but it isn't. And we're going to create basically the standard string with uh, a new line because we chomped that off. And that is in the tuple with the L. So we return that and now we can actually deal with the Fahrenheit case. So first we need to convert the temperature that we captured to a float. So const Fahrenheit const thank you uh, standard dot format dot parse float and we are parsing to F sixty four here and we're parsing of course the temperature and this can fail and usually you will send all your errors up or you will all handle them in the same function in this case i will break that convention because we're basically in this situation dealing with some data that needs to be converted that could be wrong and in this case i want to see the actual temperature that we actually parsed so hence i break that convention of either throwing everything or handling everything Engineering is always dealing with the exceptions. Uh, error and value, then I know what was in there. So then we put in the tuple, error name, uh, error, yes please. And why don't you remove it? Ah, oh, my IntelliSense, it's doing it in the uh, vim is so much easier uh, and of course we want to have the temperature then to see what is actually wrong and we will return an empty so now we're going to actually alloc print it again we use our allocator oh, yeah i know tab doesn't work allocator what are we going to print well this is actually where we need the conversion we're going to print a decimal of course and with one decimal behind it and of course the C for Celsius and this comes all from the tuple convert to Celsius Fahrenheit and tap oh my god so f conditions to do tap uh, that should be the the default IntelliSense just use the tap okay yeah so we have the situations covered now we can do the main so public public main we are going to return a u8 so in case everything is okay we return zero and otherwise we return 
one. So first we need a buffer reader. So buffer reader equals standard dot io dot buffer reader. And we use a standard in dot reader for that. Okie dokie. So now we can actually read the buffer reader. Buffer reader reader. And we're going to use something new because we are doing this dynamically. So we're going to do uh, the, uh, the reading also dynamically, which is read until by not filling it out. What is the matter with this? Read until uh, delimiter or end of. This is why you want the bloody thing to work. I don't know why it keeps crashing on me. Yeah, well, I typed it right. It knows it. Allocator, comma. Uh, we're going to split, of course, oh, split, of course, on the N and uh, backslash N, new line. And we're going to have a maximum length of uh, 50 times the buffer string, buffer size. All strings have a maximum size, also in Rust and C++, because otherwise it will be a very convenient denial of service. You just create a string that is 64 gigabytes, and if you have 64 gigs in your system, it would stop. But it would stop the whole system uh, because no memory available. Okay, now this can uh, error, of course, so we catch this error. And how are we going to do this? Standard, oh, I need a FN here. Just looked up and saw it. Standard debug. Yeah, welcome in the Netherlands, the land of crime. So, error S, and of course, we need to pass in the tuple with the error name from the error. Ah. What is the shortcut for that? Okay, there we go. And otherwise we return one. So now we have this and we can actually capture the L and do our work. Standard dot, uh, well, we created a uh, dynamic uh, amount of memory for L. So we need to free L of course. There we go. Now the squigglies are gone and now we actually can work with it. So we now need to uh, convert our line. So convert, converted line is convert line. We take in our L and it will do all the work for us. But again, we said this partially only handles error. So we catch this error and just uh, handle it this way. And maybe in this case, we want to know what the value of the line is. Value. So we can actually do that. Okay. And otherwise we return an error. Convert record. Sorry, not convert line. Convert record. Okay, so we have a converted line that we can just print out, standard out dot print. Yeah. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. We're going to print uh, just the S. That should be enough because we already have the carriage return in there. And the tuple is just uh, the converted line. And of course, this can fill in case you pipe it and your pipe is wrong. And again, let's do this, but not pass in the value because, well, it's not in this case the data. Okay, and I think this should be it. Last famous words. Zig build. I don't have the test yet. And of course, there's an error. 
Read until no field member named. Read until. Do you know it now? <laughs> wow, that is very little errors. Well, we still need to test it. So let's cut the temps into. Uh, what was it? Zig out bin. And yes, that is correct. So there you are. We created it. So there you have it. We wrote a program not in a forever time span, but in about 30 minutes. Well, in all honesty, I started programming this and just printed it to the screen and I was done in 20 minutes and I just unwrapped the shit out of everything because basically that is to a certain extent what Awk also does. And then I spend another 30, maybe 35 minutes, so a little over an hour to make it robust, dynamically allocated memory and catch all those uh, edge cases. So yeah, it's not uh, a forever. It's done really quickly. But in all honesty, I probably also would have defaulted to Awk or Python <coughs> to uh, do this once. But these kind of little programs really is good to get that Fingerspitzengefühl, as the Germans call it. To really get that road stuff in your fingers. Uh, and I really adore Zig. So I hope you learned something and see you in the next one. But rust for the win this time. <laughs>